morning everybody as you all know we have an essential organ called as thyroid gland located in the front of the neck and this gland is called a shield it has two lobes attached by an isthmus so among the major glands which we've been discussing first was the basically <coughs> the anterior pituitary the posterior pituitary now we go on to discuss the thyroid gland the learning objectives are we need to know the gross anatomy histology the microscopy and the macroscopic features and the thyroid hormones the t3 and t4 t3 is triiodothyronine and t4 is thyroxine and the basis for synthesis is iodine metabolism with biosynthesis and storage and secretion and transport and actually metabolism with applied aspect so it's the largest endocrine gland located in front of the larynx on either side and anterior to the trachea it has two lobes connected by an isthmus it weighs around 15 to 25 grams it has the highest blood supply of around 400 to 600 ml per gram per minute the rate of blood flow is very high so it has a rich blood supply you can see the thyroid gland the larynx so the lobes is made up of multiple follicles you can see and these follicles and contain the sinai which is a unit of a gland each follicle like contain a single layer of cuboidal epithelium it is filled with a clear viscous material called as thyroglobulin which contains the thyro it's called as colloid the colloid contains thyroglobulin the parafollicular cells are present in between the thyroid as sinai and the parafollicular secrete calcitonin you can see the colloid being less in hyperthyroid and hypothyroid so it's lesser in the glands are active in hyperthyroid or are inactive in hypothyroid and the hormones are the hydrothyroxines compound formed by coupling two hydrogenated thyroxine molecules with an hydro linkage thyroxin it constitutes about 90% of the thyroid hormone triiodothyronine constitutes about 9% of the thyroid and reverse treaty constitutes around 1% of the thyroid hormone with calcitonin being secreted by the parafollicular cells for synthesis we need to know generally how the iodine is most essential raw material for the synthesis of thyroid hormones they are rich in seafood bread and milk daily average intake is around 500 microgram the minimum intake is 100 to 200 micrograms if you eventually see the fate of iodine more than 80% are excreted by the kidney 20% are removed by the cells of thyroid. The normal plasma iodide levels are 0.15 to 0.3 microgram percent. The thyroid iodide is 95% with 5% in the cells and 95% accumulated in the thyroglobulin, that is the colloid. And if you consume 500 micrograms in diet, 120 is taken up by the thyroid and 40 is given out. Out of this 120, 80 forms the T3, T4 and gets metabolized in the liver and the remaining 60 comes to the extracellular fluid. So 20 micrograms in the stool and 480 is. So almost the 500 what you have consumed is equal to the intake is equal to the output. So if you take the iodine enters the blood and is taken up by the thyroid gland by the process of iodide trapping so we need to understand that as you all know iodine is most essential raw material for synthesis of thyroid hormones ingested iodine is converted to iodide 
and absorbed by the gastrointestinal tract. Iodide enters the blood and is taken up by the thyroid gland and this process is called as iodide trapping. So we need to understand that iodine is a trace element. It is selectively trapped by the thyroid gland. The basal membrane of the sinner cells has the ability to pump iodide by secondary act to transport along with sodium. By this method, concentration of iodine in the follicular cell is increased 30 times than its concentration in the blood. So the next is synthesis and secretion with oxidation of iodide. Once the iodide is within the follicular cell, it is oxidized to an active intermediate. This reaction is catalyzed by thyroid peroxidase. So that is oxidation of iodide. It is a membrane bound enzyme found in the apical portion of the follicular cells. So the next first is iodide trapping along with synthesis and secretion of thyroglobulin. Second is oxidation of iodide then followed by organification. In organification, the elemental iodine combines to the third position of tyrosine residues to form MIT which is monoidothyrosine. Tyrosine is a part of thyroglobulin molecule in the colloid. Addition of another iodine to this MIT forms the fifth position of tyrosine results in the formation of diiodothyrosine. So the 2 DIT that is the coupling reaction then condensed to form T4. 1 MIT plus 1 DIT condensed to form T3. This is called coupling reaction. Thyroid peroxidase is also involved in coupling reaction. So thyroid peroxidase not only is involved in oxidation of iodide but also in coupling. And finally the thyroid hormones remain attached to the thyroglobulin molecule and are stored in the colloid. Thyroid hormone stored in the gland is sufficient to meet the requirements of the body for 2 to 3 months. So iodide trapping is an active which involves sodium iodide transimporter. It is dependent on sodium potassium pump and TSH also helps in iodide trapping. So we have drugs which inhibit this which are perchlorates and thiocyanates. Synthesis and secretion of thyroglobin has two units that is which has a molecular weight of 6,60,000. Oxidation is mainly by the thyroid peroxidase. The anti-oxidating drugs are, that is anti epithelial drugs are thyrosyl, thyroidiametamazole and it is dependent on iodine chloride transporter called as pendrel. As I told you, organification is how the MIT and DIT are formed and this combination results in the formation of peroxidase coupling reaction in the presence of peroxidase. So you can see how the whole iodide trapping takes place converted into iodine and iodothyrosins forming the presence of peroxidase. You can see from the thyroglobulin how DIT, 2 DIT forms T4 and DIT plus MIT forms and this is a process of oxidative coupling. Thyroid hormones secretion is either by the process of endocytosis or proteolysis. The T4 is around 80 microgram per day and 4 microgram is T3 with reverse T3 being 2 microgram. They are almost transported in the bound form of thyroid binding globulin. A few percent is free. So the half-life of T4 is 7 days whereas the half-life of 3 days. T3 is one day. So biologically active is T3. The radioaminase in total MNS plasma is around T4 is 8 microgram. This T3 is 0.15 microgram. The plasma bound iodine is 6 microgram per deciliter. They metabolized by deiodination in the liver and kidney. One third of the circulating T4 is converted to T3, 45% is converted to T3. So the metabolism is mainly by the process of 
deiodination, decarboxylation and deconjugation. So to understand this, how the iodide trapping takes place, iodine is converted to iodide, binds to the binds in the colloid to form monoidothyrosin and diiodothyrosin. You can see monoido forms plus diodo forms triiodothyronine which is T3 diiodothyronine plus monoidothyronine forms triiodothyronine that is the reverse so, or DIT plus DIT forms what is called as so normally we need to understand this thyroglobulin which is so essential molecule as you can see on the right side is a glycoprotein molecule which is secreted into the follicles of the thyroid gland it is produced by the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus of the thyroid acinar cells. It has two subunits with a molecular weight of 6,60,000. It contains 123 tyrosine residues, of which only 4 to 8 are incorporated in the thyroid hormone. The thyroid hormones are formed within the thyroglobulin and are bound to it until secretion. During secretion, the colloid is ingested by the thyroid cells and the peptide bonds are hydrolyzed. Normal serum thyroglobulin is 6 nanogram per deciliter. It is increased in hyperthyroidism. So we discussed about the secretion. So how is it regulated? Normally, it is by negative feedback mechanism and autoregulation. So these, if you take the factors like stress and cold, stimulate the thyroid thyrotropin releasing hormone and hypothalamus which increases the TSH in the anterior pituitary thereby acting on the target organ resulting in the metabolic effects through its free T3 and T4. So to understand the concept of regulation, the specific feedback mechanisms operate through the anterior pituitary and hypothalamus. Thyroid function is mainly regulated by pituitary TSH. It's a feedback regulation. Increased level of thyroid hormone in the body decreases the secretion of, you can see the dotted lines, the dashed lines. So the increased level of thyroid hormones, of T3, T4, decreases the secretion of TSH from the anterior pituitary. It has effect, it also has an effect on the hypothalamus to decrease the secretion of TRH. So this is an example of clear cut negative feedback mechanism. So what is TSH2? It's also called as thyrotropin. It's a glycoprotein containing 211 amino acid residues secreted by the anterior pituitary gland. Molecular weight of 28,000, 28 to 30,000 with the half-life of 60 minutes. Normal secretion is around 110 microgram per day with a plasma level of 2.3 microliters per lens. It attacks on the receptors of cell membrane and it's mediated to the action of cyclic midi AMP which is the second messenger so it increases the size and number of acinar cells it increases the activity of iodoid pump which enhances the rate of iodide trapping it increases iodination of tyrosine and coupling to form thyroid hormones it increases proteolysis of thyroglobulin releasing thyroid hormones in the blood so the effect of TSH is brought about by the activation of second messenger cyclic AMP. To so summarize, it increases the secretion of hormones. It has an hyperplasic and hypertrophic. It causes hyperplasia and hypertrophic gland, and also increases the blood supply. That is the vascularity. So you can see how uh, the normal mechanism of thyroid hormone releasing. It always binds to the nuclear receptor and cause genomic and non-genomic effects. It can have on the increased protein for growth and development or sympathetic effect or increase the mitochondrial enzyme activity and also enhances the other enzyme proteins to increase the metabolic rate, which is a calorogenic action. So always the thyroid hormones bind to the nuclear receptor, causing hormone receptor complex. So they have action on growth and development, metabolic rate by increasing the basal metabolic rate and it is calorogenic. 
and all metabolism of the carbohydrate, fat, protein, vitamins, other hormones and on water and so the mechanism of action is through cyclic AMP which is second messenger when the hormones bind to the nuclear receptor so you should not be confused with the action and mechanism action and what does it do on the, the whole body system so when I talk about the mechanisms they act on the various sites including the nucleus mitochondria and plasma membrane they enter the cells and bind to the receptors in the nuclei the hormone receptor complex then binds to the DNA to form the mRNA formation of mRNA or RNA lead, RRNA lead to the formation of variety of proteins proteins serve a structural and functional component of the cell and modify cell function so these are the main actions first is on the growth thyroid hormone are essential for general growth and skeletal maturation they stimulate the secretion of growth hormone they also increase the synthesis of structural proteins they help in development of brain and potentiate the effect of growth hormone on tissues in amphibians there is a change which is called as metamorphosis thyroid hormones increase the metabolism of almost all the tissues of the body except brain testis uterus lymph nodes spleen Thyroid hormone produced in excess can increase the metabolic rate by 60 to 700 percent. So the calorigenic action is by increasing the oxygen consumption. Except on these organs, there is no increased metabolic activity. And this is mainly due to metabolism of fatty acids, the mobilize, and the increased activity of sodium-potassium pump. So the metabolic actions are or on different metabolisms have effects on various this is the carbohydrate it increases the rate of absorption from GIT and which is independent of calorigenic action so it increases the blood glucose level by increasing absorption of glucose from gut increases gluconeogenesis increases insulin degradation causes rapid uptake of glucose by the cells Protein metabolism in physiological concentration, it is anabolic and in higher concentration, it is catabolic. So we need to understand that thyroid hormones are essential for protein synthesis and growth. But excess thyroid hormones can cause breakdown which is called as catabolism. One cholesterol metabolism, it lowers the circulating cholesterol level due to the increased formation of LDL receptor and increases the hepatic removal of cholesterol from circulation. So lipid metabolism is enhanced by the thyroid hormone. It increases the synthesis and mobilization degradation of lipids. It also decreases the serum cholesterol level. And on all the metabolism it acts on vitamins, water and electrolytes. On CVS, it increases the blood volume, it increases the heart rate with tachycardia, it increases the force of contraction, also the systolic and BP it increases, whereas the diastolic BP decreases, it increases the cardiac output and pulse pressure, and also causes increased diameter, which is vasodilation. On CNS, has marked effect on brain development. Most effects are on part of the cerebral cortex and basal ganglia and cochlea. And the effects increase the effects secondary to responsive to catecholamines with consequent increase in reticular activating system. So to be very clear, thyroid hormone has a marked effect on brain development. They help in synaptic development and myelination. They maintain normal reaction time in the peripheral nervous system. Excess of thyroxin causes stimulation of CNS resulting in restlessness. On respiratory system, it increases the respiratory rate and minute ventilation and also increases oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. On GIT, it increases appetite and secretion of juice and also the motility. On reproductive system, 
The uterus metabolism is not affected, but is required for normal menstrual cycles and fertility. They maintain normal ovarian cycle in females. They maintain spermatogenesis in males. They maintain libido, that is, sexual drive. On kidneys, it increases the glomerular filtration rate and also has other actions on the endocrine glands. For example, in the CVS, along with catecholamines like adrenaline and noradrenaline, it potentiates the action of thyroid hormone, which is called as permissive action. So this is hyperthyroidism, where there is protrusion of the eyeball called as exophthalmos. So there is hypothyroidism and myxedema. It's a disease of the thyroid gland. The deficiency of thyroid hormone secretion results in hypothyroidism. There are two types, which is myxedema, hypothyroidism in adults, and retinism, which is hypothyroidism in children. In hypothyroidism, the basal metabolic falls to 40%. The hair is coarse and sparse. The skin is dry and yellowish. There is poor tolerance to cold. The voice is husky and slow voice. The mental activity is slow with poor memory, which is the mental sluggishness, delayed reaction time and excessive sleep. Non-pitting edema of the feet due to deposition of mucopolysaccharides like hyaluronic acid, decreased heart rate, reduced appetite, menstrual irregularity and infertility, and elevated plasma cholesterol level. We need to supplement this with the hormone thyroxin. This is your hypothyroidic features. Wherein in hypothyroidism before from birth or before is called cretin. The classical feature is most of the time in cretinism it is caused due to hypothyroidism during fetal life, infancy and childhood. The classical feature is the child has a stunted growth because of the maternal iron deficiency, fetal dysgenesis, inborn errors, maternal antithyroid antibodies that cause the placenta, and fetal hypopituitary hypothyroidism. They have a stunted growth with starch structure and classically mental retardants with idiotic features. The CLS manifestations are due to defective myelination. They have pot belly with umbilical hernia. So the difference between pituitary dwarf and thyroid dwarf is in pituitary dwarf it is growth hormone deficiency whereas in thyroid dwarf there is mental retardation. They have enlarged here where they have short stretch of mental retardation, pot belly with enlarged and protruded tongue. In addition they have depth mutism and rigidity. Maternal either deficiency is the cause. Supplementation is the hormone. So cretinism, you can see how the chronological age differs. Increased use of hydrate salt and treatment. Hyperthyroidism is due to excess secretion of T3 and T4, which leads to this condition. The causes of this are due to thyroid overactivity can be due to Graves disease, adenoma, toxic multinodal Hashimoto's, the extra thyroid can be ectopic thyroid tissue. Here the clinical features are, they are very nervous, chittery, they are restless, there is loss of weight, hyperphagia, there is heat intolerance, increased pulse pressure. fine tremors with short skin and sweating, the nervous the increase, better vessel metabolic rate up to 100% with pulse rate increased. So most of the patients in hyperthyroid when you are treating, we need to maintain a chart of resting pulse rate. During sleep the pulse rate decreases better, whereas here in this hyperthyroid patients the rate doesn't decrease. So which is a very important sign to manifest to change, see the effect of treatment. 
other signs are diarrhea muscle weakness goiter hyperglycemia menstrual disturbances increase appetite and weight loss so to summarize there is exophthalmos is protrusion of eyeball there is nervous nervousness and fine tremors increased cardiac output systolic blood pressures increased there is intolerance to heat and excess sweating increased bmr hyperglycemia or decreased cholesterol there is weight loss polyphagia and diarrhea so what is exophthalmos the protrusion of eyeball caused due to inflammation and edema of the retroorbital tissue surgical removal of the thyroid gland was used of anti thyroid drugs so the radioactive iodine therapy for destruction of the gland so these diseases 60 to 8% common in men women autoimmune there is antibodies to tsh receptors similar they have clinical features of hyperthyroidism with pre adipocyte fibroblast released cytokines that promote inflammation edema resulting in protrusion of the eyeball which is called as exophthalmos so you can see all the changes how the eyeball is protruded it acts on all the systems of the body so that is the protrusion of the eyeball which is the exophthalmos we have an exophthalmometer to measure how much protrusion has taken place as you all know this is protrusion caused due to inflammation and edema of retroorbital structure that is around the eyeball the treatment is anti thyroid drugs like perfluorates and thiocyanate which block the thyroid trapping and thyroid lens like propyl thyroxine and methamazole which block organic binding of iodide and coupling reaction so enlargement of thyroid gland which is the goiter which can be either with normal function or increased activity or decreased iodine deficiency goiter mainly the may normal intake is should be more if it is less than 50 microgram it resolves it's endemic in central europe of great lakes of united states the natural occurring goiter gens are cabbage turnips and which are pro goitrogenic mainly the brassica family so the thyroid function tests are measurement of the bmr it's high in hyperthyroidism around 100% it is low in hypothyroidism with less than 40% and the serum estimation of plasma bound iodine normal plasma bound iodine is 4 to 8 micrograms per deciliter less than 3.5 microgram per deciliter indicates hypothyroidism then there is radioactive iodine uptake radio iodine labeled iodine is administered to the subject and uptake of iodine by the thyroid is evaluated this test helps to differentiate between normal toxic nodule so normal iodine uptake is 20 to 40% in hyperthyroidism there is increased uptake in hypo there is decreased uptake in ultrasonography of the gland radionuclide scan and detection of anti thyroid antibody and finally we do fine needle aspiration for any tumor